News Nation's Kelly Meyer is here. Dave Ehrenberg, Palm Beach County attorney, is here. Florida State um, from Florida. Misty Maris, trial attorney and legal analyst, is here. And of course, Mick Mulvaney, News Nation's political contributor. Uh, thank you, all four of you, for joining in. Kelly, uh, first of all, uh, let me start. Well, actually, Misty, if we've got you, I just want to get your reaction to the amount in this verdict because the, the jury today said that Donald Trump, quote, acted with malice when he posted and said these remarks about E. Jean Carroll, and the punitive damages in this amount were for $65 million. That's a lot. Absolutely. I, when I heard that the jury uh, had made a decision so quickly, I said, this number is going to be huge. Clearly, they felt the need to punish. This was a huge part of the plaintiff's case that despite uh, being the, the statements being deemed defamatory, he continued to go out there and make comments about E. Jean Carroll. In their opening statements, they had pointed to like 81 comments that had been made at that time just relating uh, to the case. And so clearly the message was this needs to be stopped. This is deterrent. And plaintiff said the only way to get Donald Trump to stop is to hit him where it hurts, and that's in the wallet. So over $60 million, that is a huge punitive damages award. D uh, Dave Ehrenberg, I, I want to get your reaction as well to the pretty sizable amount here of punitive damages. Is that going to send the message that the jury and E. Jean Carroll uh, hoped it would send? I do, Elizabeth. I agree with Misty. This is a large verdict. Put it in perspective. The first verdict was only $5 million in total. Here you've got $65 million just in punitives. And to find for punitive damages, you have to find malice. Well, you know what demonstrates malice in front of a jury? Walking out in the middle of a closing argument. Jurors don't like that. They've got to be there. They're not getting paid anything big to be there. And they watch as the defendant has contempt for the process to walk out. Not only that, but he was muttering under his breath. And I think they sicked it to him here. And that is a massive verdict that I think will send the right message. And will it stop him from continuing to defame uh, E. Jean Carroll? I don't know. It would stop anyone else. But Trump is Trump. Kelly, this did follow, as Dave mentioned, a pretty dramatic day in court with, I mean, it is unheard of for a defendant to get up and walk out in the middle of closing arguments. Uh, it, it was quite dramatic. Yeah, and, you know, we were even, you know, hearing from his attorney, Alina Abba, earlier, uh, saying that there were two versions of Carol, the truth and the one that came to court to get money from my client. We're also just hearing tonight uh, from the former president himself taking to truth moments ago, uh, saying, quote, absolutely ridiculous. I fully disagree with both verdicts and will be appealing this whole Biden, as he says, directed witch hunt focused on me and the Republican Party. Uh, he goes on to say this is not America. And that's the same response we got from his campaign as we reached out just now. So as you know, uh, the other uh, was mentioning Dave there. Uh, that he's going to, is he going to continue to post and, and do what he's going to do? And he seems to be going already on True Social saying that this is, quote, absolutely ridiculous. Hey, Dave, what kind of appeal process does he have available to him, Trump? Very limited. Oh, sorry. Uh, it, very limited because, remember, we're just appealing the amount of damages, not whether he did it or committed defamation. It's just the amount of damages. And the fact finding is in place. There's great deference to the fact finding here by the jury. It's only a question of the law, really. And usually a higher court will reduce the large amount of punitives if it's way out of whack with the compensatory damages. But look at the numbers in front of you. We're only talking about punitives that are around three and a half times the compensatory damages. That's well within the norm. And that's why I think this verdict will hold. Yeah, we're looking at pictures uh, from moments earlier when uh, E. Jean Carroll was emerging from the court uh, with her lawyers. Mick Mulvaney, I want to bring you in here about the politics of all this. Um, there have been a lot of uh, research and, and exit polling that showed a lot of Republican voters would begin to reconsider their support for Donald Trump if he were convicted of anything. This isn't a conviction today. Um, but it is an award for defaming a woman. Uh, do you think this will impact his popularity among his base, his core supporters at all? Uh, I mean, Liz, you tell me. Think about it this way. He's already been 
found civilly liable for sexual assault, sexually assaulting E. Jean Carroll, and it didn't seem to move the needle. In fact, if it did anything, it moved the needle in his to his advantage. So the addition of punitive damages of $83.5 million, I can't, I can't see under what circumstance that would change things. If, if, if he's not going to be, if he's not going to pay a price politically for being found to have sexually assaulted somebody, I don't understand how a money, uh, money judgment would be treated any differently. Yeah. Is that surprise you at all? Um, no, I don't. I think Trump has done a really good job. I go back to the original uh, case against Donald Trump related to the Stormy Daniels payments. And that was so weak and so obviously politically motivated that even Trump's critics and some Democrats had to come to his defense. That has given Donald Trump the ability to look at every single later legal action against him, be it criminal or civil, and say, this is just like that. They're just out to get me. They don't like me. They want to take all of my money. They want to bankrupt me. They want to make sure I can't run for president again. And that message that he's delivering has been selling. The message is this. Look at me. Look what they're doing to me. If they do this to me, imagine what they can do to you. Vote for me and I'll make sure that doesn't happen. That has been solid gold political uh, real estate for Donald Trump the last six or eight months. All right, Misty, I want to bring you back in. Uh, you know, a jury awarded E. Jean Carroll $5 million uh, that Donald Trump was supposed to pay her several months ago. A second jury has now awarded her $83 million. Is she ever going to see any of this money? Because she hasn't seen any of the $5 million yet. Yeah, big difference in that number. First of all, Dave made great points about maybe why. Another reason could be the defamatory statements relating to the case today were made when Donald Trump was actually president. Biggest megaphone in the world, as the plaintiffs say. Elizabeth, to answer your question, this will go through the appeals process. It's likely that he won't be paying anything until that process is uh, underway and there's a final judgment on the matter. So, she may see some money someday, but the appeals process can be a bit of a slow, a bit of a slow one. And I'm sure he'll be challenging this damages award. Uh, absolutely. It's a tremendous number. Kelly Meyer, this verdict comes down today, of course, as we're all in the midst of a presidential campaign. Uh, what I, I'm, I'm sure you said he just posted a moment moment ago on uh, social media, his reaction to the verdict. Uh, what are his plans this yeah. weekend for campaigning? Because I'm sure we'll hear more about it on the campaign trail. Yeah, and he added to that the other section of that truth is uh, him saying that he's being used, um, the political system, our legal system is out of control and being used as a political weapon. So just echoing what Mick Mulvaney was saying, that he is just going to continue using this on the campaign trail. You know, we reached out to his campaign after New Hampshire. He didn't have too much on his schedule um, compared to his big challenger now, Nikki Haley. Um, but we're sure that he's going to be using his true social, his platform, and probably going on more of a, a tangent there, using that to get to his supporters. And I know from the voters we've talked to, as Mick was saying as well, from Iowa to New Hampshire, they all were standing behind him, some even more so coming out to his rallies because of all of this, all these indictments and the charges that he's been facing. They feel as though they need to sp stand by him more than ever. So it's only really this right now may only just amplify and solidify him even more in his support with those um, Trump loyal supporters we've been seeing on the campaign trail. Yeah, as Mick Mulvaney just said, it's been uh, campaign stump speech gold for him thus far. Kelly Meyer, Dave Ehrenberg, Misty Maris, uh, Mick Mulvaney, thank you so much for hopping in on this breaking news tonight. Really appreciate it.